Hi, I'm David Robinson, Director of Marketing at Roadmaster. And with me today, we have Mike Cannon. He's the designer and engineer of Roadmaster Braking Systems. And uh, we've been very successful with our Invisibrake product, but I thought it might be helpful for some of our installers to kind of hear what we're hearing and see what we're seeing. And in particular, we're talking about common installation issues. So with that in mind, uh, we've got a few photos and uh, we'll kind of go through them throughout the video. But Mike, uh, the very first thing, and by the way, this is what we call our five in five. So we're going to try to cover the five most common installation errors in five minutes. So with that in mind, Mike, tell us about brake pedal clamp mounting height. Um, that's the location that the pedal clamp will be mounted on the brake pedal itself. And you know, Dave, if that is further up the pedal, we get a lot less force. The further down the pedal we are, the more force the air cylinder is gonna to provide to the system and pull the brakes with uh, more force. So we're really trying to get proper braking here and by giving it a correct location on the uh, pedal clamp, that's gonna do just that. Okay, so basically we need to think of the brake pedal arm as a lever and the lower down the lever we get, the better the braking is gonna be. That's true. Okay, well good. All right, number two, too many turns or too tight of turns of the cable. What is that in reference to? Well, that's from the air cylinder to the uh, pedal clamp itself. And there's a lot of journeys you can make um, from after that black sheath cable comes off of the air cylinder and makes a tight radius. That's not preferable. We want as few turns as possible. And if we can get that cable running as straight as possible without making loops or making excessive amount of turns. The more turns that are in that cable or the tighter the radius, the more resistance you have and it makes it more difficult for the air cylinder to actually pull the cable. So, you know, the straighter you can route that um, with as few turns as possible is the most convenient. If you do have to make a few turns, you want them not so tight of a radius and you may find that you have to turn the pressure up a little higher in that application. Okay, so in a nutshell, try to route the cable as straight as possible. Don't coil it up like a lasso. And uh, in general, the fewer the turns, the better, better braking performance. Yes, that's, okay. that's what we find. Very good. Third item, cable doesn't line up with the center of the pulley. Uh, why is that a problem? Well, you know, we, our brake pedal and our firewall and the way we route this cable is very important. Not all cars are created equal. And we find that oftentimes an installer will get in a hurry and he won't take the time to get the cable straight off of the pedal to the pulley and to the cable anchor. And when you have uh, the cable on the pulley crooked, it certainly can jump off the cable. We put some provisions in there to not do that. But oftentimes we see units that come through our factory where we have to go in and redo something for, for an installer down the road that, that had done this wrong. And that's where these photos actually come from. You can see in this photo that obviously this cable is very crooked and um, this isn't the most extreme we've seen, but we definitely do see problems there. All right, so in this particular photo, this pulley should be straightened out so it's parallel and in line with the cable. Um, th this is exactly what you're talking about, correct? That's correct. Okay, next item. We're still on the pulley. The pulley is mispositioned. So what's wrong with this? I don't, I don't see what's wrong. Well, it, well, one of the things we're trying to do here is, you know, pull on that brake pedal. And we do need that brake pedal to function normally as if there wasn't a braking system there. After all, this is an Invisibrake. You don't want that pulley coming into contact with your brake pedal. And with proper location, the pedal bracket will actually clear uh, the top of the pulley missing it and you can still get at the appropriate angles that we're looking for and still be straight. Okay, so in this particular photo the problem is is that the brake pedal can't be depressed normally because the bracketry that was installed in the brake pedal is actually hitting the pulley. That's correct. So I can see why that would be a, a problem. And also I see we've got quite a bit of loose slack which leads us to our next topic. Too much free play in the cable. Yes, when the uh, system is completely installed and adjusted properly, and you can see there is an adjuster sleeve here on these pedal brackets, there's three pictures here, the top, the middle, and the bottom. The top bracket, you see no ball protruding at the end. The middle bracket, you can see the ball. The lower uh, picture shows you that there's, there's too much ball. We're really looking for a little bit of slack in that cable. If it's too tight, the brakes could be applied um, with, without any force at all and if there's too much slack there that creates a new problem for us. 
Okay, so the middle one shown here with uh, just the ball ver barely protruding, that's kind of the Goldilocks, that's kind of just right. That's true. We want about a quarter inch of slack in that cable is what we're looking for. Excellent. All right, well, that is five of the most common installation issues in five minutes. Um, but I also wanted to touch base on a couple of other items, namely, you brought up earlier wiring. Uh, tell me about the wiring. We're not, you're not talking about the Invisibrake wiring, you're talking about the vehicle's wiring, is that correct? Yes, the uh, Invisibrake functions off of electricity coming from the motorhome, and we need good wiring between car and motorhome for that to function properly. And it's really not really part of the installation, I mean, that is part of the towing package. And if that's not functioning properly, if you have a loose wire or a bad connection, um, that can actually make the Invisibrake not perform properly. And although it may perform very well sitting still in the parking lot, you may find that at 60 miles an hour going down a hill that the brake lights are coming on and going off on your monitor and you don't understand why the Invisibrake is engaging and disengaging. And that can just be a simple loose wire. Or a lot of times, you know, technicians, you bring it back to the shop in the parking lot again, it starts working again. So. You know, we have to look at the wiring a little bit before so, we start the job. So before you actually install the Invisibrake, check the vehicle lighting, make sure that everything's functioning. If it's not working correctly, then you very well will have, may likely have an Invisibrake not functioning correctly. That's true, and I, I've actually seen customers that just did not want to replace their electrical cord because they just assumed that it, it was working, and we would find that, you know, you could see where it had been drug on the ground and there was wire exposed, and we just said, this is not going to be a success story for you with your braking, you know, with this condition of the cable. Well, very good. Well, that's it for us. Uh, on behalf of Mike uh, and myself, David, thank you for listening to us. We hope that you find this helpful, and uh, thank you for selling and installing our products.